Can you share some of your life lessons is a question that I got recently and I'm going to share those in this video. Hi, my name is Ivana and if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure to click that subscribe button. But without further ado, let's get into my first harsh life lesson that I'd like to share with you. And it is never say anything about anybody that you would not repeat to their face. I learned this the very hard way when I was about 11 years old in primary school. I love to gossip and I had made the mistake of saying things about some of my classmates that I was too scared to repeat to their face, which led to me getting into a fight with the whole class and me being in social isolation for months. It was absolutely traumatic. I actually also speak about it in my Draw My Life video on my main channel. I've linked that video down in the description below. But the biggest lesson that actually I think saved me from a lot of drama later on in life was to not say anything about anybody that I wouldn't repeat to their face. Nowadays also, I am definitely not a saint. I sometimes gossip, but I always make sure that that whatever I say to a person, I am confident that I would be able to repeat that to their face. Sometimes it is also harsh things, but in that case, I actually take the situation for granted where I will have to repeat that to a person in their face and maybe even lose that relationship. I am just always very, very conscious about saying things about people and repeating that to their face. The second life lesson that I'd like to share with you is again something that I learned in a very, very harsh way and it is to never beg anybody to stay when they want to leave you. I was in a relationship, my first serious relationship with a man who I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. However, at one point after a lot of fights, he wanted to break up with me and I literally begged him to stay. Worst thing that I could have done to save that relationship because after that I think he lost respect for me because begging is not something that gets a lot of respect and our whole complete relationship changed. He started treating me differently and actually when we broke up he also admitted that he thought I would never leave him because of that situation. I left in the end. So nowadays, whenever a person, whether that's a friend or even a family member, but also in a relationship, tells me that I'm going to leave you, I'm like, the door is open. You are free to leave anytime you want, but if you want to stay, I would like you to stay. I never beg anybody anymore to stay. You're free to stay if you want to stay, but if you want to leave, I won't stop you. This is also very important for life lesson number three, mind your company. Scientific research in psychology shows that the five people around you at one point or another are going to define who you are and they are going to impact your behavior. I have also experienced very bad things with this because I actually got to spend a night in jail at the beginning of my 20s because of a very, very toxic friendship that I cut off way too late. After that, I became just so mindful about my company. I don't like to hang out with people who complain, with people who constantly see the worst case scenario of any situation. I also don't like to hang out with people who don't know how to pull themselves together out of difficult situations because the people who I surround myself with are going to impact my state of mind and also my actions. So I like to surround myself with people who are very positive, always are looking for solutions to their problems and look at life in a positive perspective. The fourth life lesson I actually learned from a very classic book, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Before I read this book, I had always been taught in Dutch society that it's not only super important to have your own opinion, but also to to voice it as much as possible and that discussions are really really good for sharpening your mind great but that will actually not 
lead to people liking you that much because what I learned from how to win friends and influence people is that the best thing that you can do to build really really great relationships with other people is to avoid discussions as much as possible now if I feel a topic is really really important like for instance racism or the LGBTQ community then I will definitely raise my voice also sexism is something I'm very outspoken about but in general 99% of the time I've learned to just keep my opinion to myself because I appreciate and value my relationships with other people a lot more. This belief of mine that it's really better to keep your opinion to yourself 99% of the times also got deepened a lot during my yoga teacher training because when you don't have discussions with people or when you minimize discussions with people, ah, oh, it brings so much peace into your life. It's wonderful. Life lesson number five was also a very harsh life lesson that I had to learn. And I also spoke about that in my Draw My, Draw my Life video on my main channel, but for the sake of completeness, I will also mention it here. And it is that your intuition is loud but you have to be willing to listen. For years, I knew that I did not want to work in the corporate world, but I kept going at it because it was the rational thing to do. My intuition, however, in the back of my mind was screaming, run, 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 this career is not for you. And I would ask my intuition, but what is the alternative? And my intuition would say, I don't know, but you have to run. And I was like, no, not good enough until it actually led me to having a burnout and then I was forced to make the decision to leave and go out into the world, travel and figure out what I wanted to do. Turns out your intuition is very, very finicky and it is not a straight road. I don't know if you guys watched Harry Potter, but there is this one scene I believe in the fourth Harry Potter movie, The Goblet of Fire, where Harry has this lucky potion that he wins. And then when he takes the lucky potion, he has to do all these counterintuitive things in order to reach his goal. So for instance, he wants to find a certain professor, which his friends think is in the classroom, but he's like, no, 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 I have this gut feeling that I have to go to this garden and then he goes into the garden and the professor is there and he actually catches him while the professor is drunk and that way he achieves his mission this is actually exactly how your intuition works rationally you may be thinking like oh i need to go this way in order to achieve what i want to achieve but your intuition is like no go left go left and you're like this doesn't make any freaking sense i think i need to go right and your intuition is like no go left and then when you go left which is something that I only learned to trust later on in life, you will actually find out that you will achieve what you want to achieve or get what you want to get much faster if you do this irrational thing that your intuition is telling you to do. So your intuition is loud, but it doesn't always make sense, but it is usually right in the end. So it's worthwhile following it. Number six is the life lesson that actually led me to leave everything behind and come build a new life in India. I have actually even given a whole TED talk about this and it is choose curiosity over fear. Now, I'm not saying go and be irrational and be curious about things that can kill you, but there are a lot of things in the world where your parents or even society will make you believe that they are super dangerous. Like for instance, not getting a diploma. I know quite a lot of people who have become very, very successful without getting their diploma. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't get your diploma, but if you don't get it, it doesn't mean that you're gonna end up as a failure in life. Then for instance, leaving your corporate job, scary will not kill you might actually benefit you in the end. Choosing curiosity over fear in these kind of situations where something will not kill you, but of course might cause you some 
serious inconvenience might be the best thing that you do for your life. For me, coming to India, there was nothing easy about it. I left my relationship, I left my home, I left all of my best friends, I left my family, I left all of my pain clients in the Netherlands. So I had to start my business from scratch in India. There was nothing easy about it, but I am so, so happy that I chose curiosity over fear because coming to India would definitely not kill me, but has made my life so much better and I'm so happy to be here. Lesson number seven is something that was ironically taught to me by my ex, which in the end kind of bit him in the ass and it is put yourself first. Make sure you're always looking out for number one. I so clearly remember being in that relationship and sometimes having to choose between situations where I would be doing something on my own or spending time with my ex where doing something on my own would really benefit me more than just spending time with my ex he was the person who always used to tell me you know what be selfish here put yourself first look out for number one we are going to be just fine but i need you to be happy because if you are not happy we're not happy in the end actually this also led me to leave that relationship and come to india for him putting himself on number one meant that he stayed back in the netherlands and that is something that i also really really wanted for him because obviously i also did not want him to be unhappy but for me staying in the netherlands meant that i was going to be unhappy for the rest of my life and that's why i came to india put yourself first look out for number one because if you are not happy the world cannot be happy. Ha ha ha. Uh, lesson number eight is something that actually really got confirmed for me during COVID. It was a lesson that I had already learned during my travels and coming back home so much. COVID really, really made it so clear for me how important it is to enjoy your everyday life. So make sure that you love the work that you do. Make sure that you love the home, the city, or the country that you live in. And third, make sure that you really, really like the person who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. During COVID, obviously, I decided to stay here in India. I really noticed how much I love my everyday life here. I love making videos. I have an Indian boyfriend who I've been with now for years and who really proved to be the best partner I could wish for. Whatever you do for the rest of your life on a daily basis is going to make up so much more than the highlight days of your life. Make damn sure that you really, really love your everyday life would be the last life lesson that I would like to share with you for now. What is the biggest life lesson that you learned? Let me know down in the comments below because I always love learning from you guys as well. If you enjoyed this video and if you feel maybe a lot more people should see it, consider sharing it and also make sure to put a thumbs up. You can also consider subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more of my videos and join more than 2,000 other subscribers. It's free and you'll get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!